Hi there. Today, I need to talk to you about sex. It's not our usual topic for Brave New Podcast or for 1984 and George Orwell. However, we have spent the last five episodes, plus or minus the bonus episodes, uh, we've spent the last five episodes talking about repression and all of the the, the bad and evil things that the, the state, the big brother state, is doing to our poor Winston. And it's been pretty bad so far. Um, food is lousy. Gin is lousy. Life seems lousy. Work is creepy lousy. And we've had hints that things are not ideal when it comes to love relationships. Male, female, male, male, female, female, doesn't matter. Nobody seems to be having a particularly good time. This is going to change markedly the way that sex is dealt with when we go from 1984 to Brave New World, which is also interesting because Brave New World was written before 1984. But just to put it into some context, if, uh, if our only vision of sex in the black and white days is black and white movies, and specifically post Hayes Code black and white movies, then chances are we're a little bit off. Uh, when I was at UCLA, we had an opportunity to see, I think it was a festival of pre Hayes Code movies. The Hayes Code was the, the thing that all of the studio bosses, Louis V. Mayer and the Warner Brothers, all of these guys, they got together and they realized Congress was about to put regulations on them to protect viewers from questionable material and especially from children from going into an afternoon matinee on their own and seeing something that they shouldn't, which may seem kind of outrageous nowadays because, again, black and white movies seem so tame. But prior to this moment, when all of these moguls got together in the Waldorf Astoria in New York City, and in fact, there's a, a marvelous radio play called The Waldorf Conference that LA Theater Works did, oh my God, 24 years ago, 23 years ago. Um, if you can find it online, The Waldorf Conference, marvelous. Ed Asner plays Louis B. Mayer. He is spectacular. Um, Dalton Trumbo, uh, oh, all sorts of great people. Anyway, so Waldorf Conference. Uh, what they decided is they were going to put in place their own code that they were going to stick to. And that code would limit how long a kiss could be held on screen or, or where you could be kissing, not on a person's body, but in a person's home. Uh, how did they get away with kissing in a bedroom? At least one character had to have at least one foot on the floor at all times. Um, a kiss couldn't last more than so many seconds at a time, which Hitchcock gets away with. Uh, I think our professor said it was in Notorious. I think it was Notorious, where he has a kiss that goes on for a while, and the camera goes around the couple as they kiss, and every however many seconds, three seconds or whatever, uh, like a, a column, you know, like a Roman column or a column holding up the, the ceiling, a load-bearing column, would go in front of the view and that would break the number of seconds. And after that, they would get to, uh, get to keep kissing. And so just as long as you kept breaking your view every so many seconds, it was going to be fine. That's how Hitchcock gets away with things. Not everybody else was so, so lucky. But... The only reason that they had to enact the Hayes Code was because prior to that, they'd gotten away with some pretty racy things on film. And the thing I remember the most in watching these old Hayes Code movies, and none of them were particularly stellar. I don't remember any of them. Some of them were like murder mysteries and, you know, there was a gangster mall and she'd come out and she was clearly not wearing any undergarments. And um, this was in those, for those of you who sew, um, it would have been a, a heavy crepe, uh, a heavy crepe silk cut on the bias. The ones that I think you may have seen if you ever watched those kind of movies where the front, um, oh, Marion's dress in 
Raiders of the Lost Ark, the one that Belloc gives her. There's a diamond panel that comes from sternum down to uh, across her belly. So the middle of the diamond would be where her belly button was, front and back, because that made the dresses drape beautifully that, as you may recall from Marion's white dress. Um, imagine Marion not wearing any undergarments. Um, there is a scene where she is on the deck of a ship and the wind is blowing pretty hard and you, you kind of have to feel like maybe Karen Allen was glad that she was able to wear undergarments on the deck of that ship because otherwise that would be pretty revealing. There was a lot of revealing in the pre Hays Code days. So, so when I'm talking to my kids about black and white movies really not being all that uh, different from today. It's just that they didn't have color film stock. Their life was in color. Um, I think it's pretty hard to remember and to, to keep that in the front of your mind. Brave New World having been written before 1984, it is easy for me to think, I can't talk about sex that much, and that would be wrong. Orwell talks about sex in our upcoming book, uh, 1984, our upcoming chapter, chapter six of 1984, very straightforwardly. He minces no words and he, he makes it very clear how repression that is a, a single focus like political repression probably not be particularly effective if if your goal was to run a society forever or for as long as you can get away with it anyway um, if you include in the, the things that you are repressing things like personal relationships as we've seen with mothers and children then you're that much closer to having total control over your people if you include the final stage, if you include love between consenting adults, you have now crossed into a arguably total control of a person. The One of the things that my husband said to me when I was talking to him about this, because I said, it's kind of weird, you know, as an adult now going back and reading this and going, wow, that's a lot of sex. Um, it was interesting because he said when he he had spent time in Slovakia and he had read a lot of books coming out of the Czech Republic and Czechoslovakia before it was separated and and he remembered being surprised by how um, pre end of communism pre the wall coming down the only act of rebellion that was available to you was what you could do with your body that hadn't been completely shut down and as a consequence everybody was rather promiscuous and and it was understood and just kind of expected or if not expected at least not nobody turned up their nose nobody rolled their eyes it's all you had and here in 1984 even that's been taken away which is a long way of saying the chapter about sex isn't about sex. It's about control. And uh, n now in our mo modern culture, uh, at least in the United States, that control takes on a, a whole bunch of different uh, resonances, I think. And the idea that someone could be brainwashed like Winston into feeling like the the actual act of intercourse was something to be ashamed of as an adult uh, something to be ashamed of something that was dirty certainly his wife his wife had been conditioned to believe that excuse me i'm going to sneeze <sighs> we are having allergy season and i've got a fan on because it's really hot um, his first wife or his wife had been conditioned to believe that there was no reason for 
sex. It was very much lie back and think of the flag, or in this case, lie back and think of Big Brother or the party. Um, but for very natural biological impulses, you know, you see somebody you're attracted to, and why not continue the species with that person? Um, to actively twist that kind of biology is very, very sick, sadistic, sadistic, twisted. Uh, but that gets into not having control over your mind, which we've already dealt with, with the double think and the thought police and thought crime. But now you have this extra layer of not having control of your physical body. And that may be something new to think about for men. I don't know if it would be that new for women. There's a, there are lots of different ways in American society anyway, where women have a difficult time expressing how central the control over their own body can be or should be or is to being a fully realized person. Um, and that goes all the way from what kind of a job you can qualify to do. Um, you know, if you can fireman carry me out of a burning building, I don't care what gender you are. <laughs> I just want somebody to help me out of a burning building. Uh, all, all the way to when you choose to have children and, and the impact that those decisions can have on people's livelihoods. Um, the ripple effects go out in so many different directions and, and at such different depths that I think it's, it's easy to, to push them off to the side and just say, well, there's a lot of shitting actually that's going on in my mind. You should, she should, they should, a lot of that stuff. Um, it's somebody else's body and you can't really should that. And we can see in this book one effect of that kind of shoulding. You should only have the party in your mind. You should only want to uh, bear children for the party. You should not make a connection between yourself and your child, children. Um, you shouldn't have a connection between you and your, your partner because all of those things interfere with your relationship with the party. So it becomes kind of a follow the money thing. You know, who benefits? Who, who is it who wins if this happens? And, and I know that when uh, the sales of 1984 went through the roof, I had thought certain things based on that. Oh, this is a reaction to these things. But when we got to this chapter, I thought, Mm, there's more, there's more going on in this book than I remembered. And in fact, uh, several of my friends read the book before Justin and I decided to do Brave New Podcast. And all of them said, I'd write to them and say, hey, what'd you think? They all wrote back and said, I didn't remember how much sex there was in this book. And I thought, oh, that's really kind of interesting because I absolutely remembered how much sex there is coming up. And there's a considerable amount. But I didn't remember this chapter, chapter six, that we're about to do. So sex is going to stay at the top of uh, this book and way at the top of Brave New World when we get there. So gird your loins, <laughs> as it were. It's going to be an interesting ride. I have to say, I'm really glad I'm doing this with Justin so that it's not just me talking about sex. It's much more comfortable <laughs> being able to talk about it with someone else, someone else from a different generation and who would de facto have different attitudes and ideas about it. Um, please, as you think of things yourselves, please call in and leave messages for us at 
1642. That's our call in line. Or you can always email bravemepodcast at gmail.com or heather at craftlet.com. And, um, and send us your ideas or post them on Patreon, which is what Liz did before. And you should go read all of the comments that she's left. They're great. And we'll have more of that on this week's real Brave New Podcast episode. All right. That was just kind of my public service announcement that you needed to prepare yourself for all the sex that's coming. It's not fun sex. I'm sorry. But it's Orwell. Clearly he had some at some point and evidently enjoyed it and had a lovely little boy. So it's too bad he died early. That is a too bad thing. All right. Take care of yourselves. We will talk to you this Friday and I'll talk to you later.